to the Geeky Chocolate Extravaganza. My name is Heather, and we are wel we welcome our friends from Bliss Cookie. We've got Jeanette and Laurie here, who are the masters of all things cookie. We're focusing on cookies today and sharing you all these fun techniques because we truly believe that the cookie is like the universal love language for everyone. No one is going to turn down a delicious cookie. So if you're trying to welcome a friend or celebrate a birthday or even a wedding, there's cookies in all of these places. Yes. And so it's so fun to see how you guys have taken the ordinary, made it feel extra special, but always tasting really good. Oh, thank you. Thanks. This is part three of our cookie series with the Bliss Girls. If you've missed the other two, the first one, we they teach us their technique on how to make beautiful cookies. The second is royal ice cookies, but today we're going to focus on buttercream, which is not something you guys have always shared with us, yes. but it's truly how you guys got started, right? Yeah, it is. So mom used to make cookies on Valentine's Day, right? And yep. I think one something that really bonded us when we became friends at first was our love for red hot on sugar cookies. Yes, <laughs> the best. You gotta try it. If you, you haven't tried it, it, they actually have a recipe on your blog, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so highly suggest that one. It is so good. I'm thinking this could be a fun thing for eating Christmas. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. The red hot cinnamon. Yeah. Um, but we're gonna show some buttercream techniques. And I think I was, my mind was a little, I mean, I was like blown when, I, when we started making a buttercream recipe because I've generally in the past just done like our normal cake buttercream, but this one is a very different recipe. Yeah, it has a couple of different ingredients in it. Um, so one of them being it's got some sweet and condensed milk, um, and then the other is it, it's got some shortening in it. And, and to be completely honest with you, mom never uses shortening in her <laughs> We won't tell mom. <laughs> Extra of this, this, this. this. So yeah. she introduces <laughs> more of this. But she loves it. I mean, I don't even think she looks at a recipe. <laughs> it's true. She's been doing it for she, so yeah, long. She just makes it taste good. So what does the sweet and condensed milk do in your buttercream recipe? So it makes it a little bit creamier so that as you're trying to do all this piping and detailing and stuff with it, it's smoother and easier to work with, easier for your hand to squeeze and it tastes good. Oh, so it's so good. Yeah. When we were dumping it in there, my yeah. little boy was like, wait, I need this. <laughs> and then what is the addition? Because you do a combination of butter and shortening. Yes, and and you don't have to put the shortening in it. Um, on the recipe, I think it tells you that, that that's optional. Um, but the shortening, as it, it, it'll help the frosting dry a little bit so that it has a crust. So if you're planning to bag these or package them, or even just stack them on top of each other, it gives the frosting a little bit of like a crusty layer so that it, the decorating won't be damaged. So if gifting is your main objective with yeah. these, this is a great way to protect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Not quite as stable as the royal icing, okay. but definitely, you know, it won't stick to whatever you put over at the bag or yeah. whatever. Okay. Yep. Um, one of, I think, the things that we really, real, uh, like something that, again, blew our minds with you guys is how you guys use a piping bag. Yeah. Want to show us that technique? Yes. <laughs> So a little bit like um, the trick we shared about not flouring your surface when you're rolling out your cookie dough, this trick kind of came to be um, one of our favorites because it's less messy in filling your piping bags. Whether, yeah, clean up. Yeah, clean up. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Whether you're doing the royal icing or the buttercream, this trick works with both um, and we use it for both at home. All right, now that we've got our buttercream icing and our bags are ready to go, this is just going to be a little bit maybe simpler approach to your normal like royal icing even though you guys blew my mind with the <laughs> dipping technique I feel like okay I can handle royal icing now yes. but show us your buttercream techniques in case someone wants to go this way okay so this is this is fairly simple um, we've got round tips on our bags again but we've chosen bigger tips um, so with the buttercream where we're not outlining and filling in like we do with royal icing you want a big enough tip that it's not going to take you all day and kill your hand to get the frosting on the cookie. <laughs> yeah. So these are like a Wilton number five is what we've done. Yep. Okay. So um, with your cookie, I, I kind of just do it the same same technique I would with the royal icing where I'm going to pipe an outline around the shape of the cookie okay. first and then zigzag to fill it in. So I'm going to connect my frosting. And if I've got my tip up above the cookie like this, I usually get a nicer piped line. So you're still pulling it the same way you would with when you were doing your royal icing. Yeah, because yeah. we want that shape to stay nice and round. And so it's you beautiful. want to stay up above. So once you've got that, then you're just going to start kind of at, at one corner, one end, and just zigzag back and forth. Just gives it a really cute look, much neater than just trying to spread it on sure. with your butter knife. Sure. Yeah. And truthfully, I don't know if it even takes that much long. You know what I mean? Like sometimes I would think, oh, this is gonna take so much longer. Like Laurie was telling you earlier, um, if you've packaged your frosting in the bullets like this, you can easily change tips. So for these chocolates, if I were doing them at home, 
I would do the base of all of them like that where I have zigzagged and filled them in. But then if I want to do some of the little squiggle details and things on top to turn them more into a little chocolate candy, um, what I did is just, like step. Yeah, it just switched it to a smaller tip now so that the details can be a little bit more delicate. Um, and so from here, you know, you can squiggle back and forth like a drizzle again on this cookie to make him look a little bit more like a chocolate candy. So I think this, these are the details that set you guys apart. You know, I think you guys are always very mindful, but then again, not over the top. Sometimes it's like, whoa, there's yeah. so many things going on where just that little zigzag made it so fun and looked just like yeah. a little box. So you can sprinkle these um, the same way we were with the royal icing, it, but with these you just want to do it sooner than later. Okay. Because um, yeah. that frosting will start to crust over the same way. Because of the shortening. Yep, because okay. of the shortening. Um, so if, you, if we were going to package these as a little gift or something like that, I would decorate and I would let them sit out overnight like our royal icing okay. ones. And the next day um, that crust has, has formed over the top and they would be safe to put in a bag or package without you know, risk of too much damage to the frosting. They're so cute. They're still pretty simple. You know, if you don't have a lot of experience with piping bags and stuff, this is definitely a good beginner, <laughs> like give it a try. Yeah. Would you give the kids maybe a larger round? Like, okay, so it's like four zigzags or? <laughs> you could, um, and something else that people do sometimes is they'll frost the cookie this way. And then you can run like a butter knife or an offset spatula under warm water okay. um, so that it just gets hot is what you're looking for. Dry it off completely and then you can just lightly um, put that across the surface and it will smooth it out really easy. Okay. Really, really nice if you don't want the zigzag texture in the decoration. You mentioned before though um, that sometimes we start with drawings yeah, yeah. And, and so truly if you're doing it at home whether it's buttercream or royal icing that's, that's a great place to start. I think it helps you plan helps you be smarter about your design and usually happier with the outcome. So we'll just trace the cookie cutters on a piece of paper and then you take your crayons and colored pencils out and you start planning. Um, helps you pick color palettes, it helps you design you know, what details where, that way you're not going through seven cookies trying to figure yeah, it out. And, yeah, and so much yeah. icing and yep. scraping it off, yep. and absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and those drawings that we love and have worked out, we save, you know, in a little, tuck them away in a little folder and then um, if it's something that you do on any kind of recurring basis, you know, you can pull them out and then you're ready to go next time, so. Any other tips for those who are just maybe beginning or, you know, wanting to get into this? Don't get frustrated because really everything is it's just practice. Anybody can do it and it's just getting comfortable with the piping. I think that's a big thing and so it's just play with it. Play with a bag of piping and practice, practice. And it's just okay. frustrating. Oh, yeah, yeah, right? So. Yeah. <laughs> We tell our students in class, um, you know, to practice the piping, to practice getting it to lay down where you want it to and how to make it behave, just use coloring book pages. Yes. So you can tear those out, trace your black lines with the frosting, and it really does help train your hand about how to start and stop a line of frosting and how to make so it bend. So smart. And <laughs> cheap. Yes. And we, are, yeah. we probably all have them lying around. Yes. So. Yep. How long would this buttercream last? Could you make this a few days in advance? Sure. Or does it start mm -hmm. to separate? No, so generally we like to make it the day that we're decorating um, just because the consistency that it comes out of the mixer is just what you need to start decorating. So if it's been in the fridge, you need to let it sit out on the counter um, to soften a little bit, but you can let it over soften just like butter, you know, where it gets too soupy, too runny. Um, but definitely you can make it ahead of time um, and keep it in the fridge. And then when you're ready to decorate, pull it out, let it sit on the counter and maybe like, you know, every half hour or so come kind of check on it give it a stir and see what it's like to make sure it's not too thick and not too thin i love it well you can find all of these recipes as well as so many more of their cookies and their frostings and everything all on it's just blisscookies.com yep. yep. bliss is spelled with a y <laughs> but thanks you both yes, so much for being so here much. sharing your secrets and most of all we hope you guys since we're not doing extravaganza but together go make these so you can try them and be so because nothing better so what I've got here is just my, this is our white chocolate color here, um, but this is the buttercream and then I've got a little square of saran wrap down here. And with the saran wrap, you just need to make sure you're using a variety of saran wrap that's um, really good and sticky to itself. Some of the brands aren't quite so much, so. And I think you guys share your love for these little yes, spatulas. I they're think the best. you probably sure. could like, yeah. have as many as we do and yes. we have a lot. Yes, <laughs> never these are too the best. many, never. 
and we use them whether we're doing buttercream or royal icing, it's true. So I'm just kind of stirring the frosting to try to push as much of the air out of it as I can, get it nice and smooth. Just gets those little pockets out, right? Yes, yep. And then I'm gonna take um, the frosting and put it right in the center of the saran wrap that I have prepared here. And then I'm grabbing diagonal corners and pulling them together. So I've got a little bit of like a triangle pocket here. Okay. Lay that down in front of you with the frosting closest to you. And then with my hands, I'm gonna cup around and just kind of seal the frosting in there, press all of this to stick together, and then start rolling from the bottom up. And then from here, you're gonna spin. And is there a certain amount of, I no. sometimes feel like I've spun forever. Yeah. Like I probably didn't even go that yeah. far. You just saw it sealed on yeah. both ends. Okay. Yeah. So that these aren't undoing themselves, basically, is what you're looking for. And then Laura will show you how we put it in the bag. So we like to work with the clear plastic. Um, disposable the, bags. Yeah. yeah. Disposable bags. And we've got a coupler down in the bottom. And then you just take one end of your little piping. We call that a frosting bullet. bullet. Frosting yeah. bullet. And put it in and give it a good tug. So you pull it pretty firm down there, right? Yeah, you, you kind of want to get it down into okay. the coupler. Uh -huh. And then we love to use the little bag clips right here to hold the top. And then with this little tail that's poking out, we cut it just like a quarter inch away from the coupler. And then you're going to put your tip on and screw it on. And this is keeping frosting from getting out of here because you secured it with the clip, but also twisted. And then it came all the way through. So when as you're going to clean, you just pop those yeah, out. Yeah, we do. You just pull it out, and if it's a good day, it's off your back. <laughs> it's so true. There's no frosting on the yeah. top there. Yes. And it also enables us to change out the tips as we're decorating if we want to do something different. Um, but keep the by same using color. The cup yeah, yeah. So smart. We're able to just change the tip. So that's how we package all of our piping frosting and our buttercream.